This is terrifying. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, I just received a frightening email that indicates that hell is here and that the economy is in far worse shape than even the experts believe. I'm going to show you why the U.S. economy is at a tipping point and what's about to plunge it into a deep recession. Plus, we have a sponsor of today's show. I'd like to welcome Hertz Energy to the show. You can find them on the CSE under symbol HZ and on the OTCQB under symbol HZLIF. And they're developing green energy metals to power the future. And I'm going to show you how you can buy below the insiders who are highly motivated to drive the stock price higher as they're sitting on a pile the cash looking to acquire other projects to generate a big return on equity. Stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information. Now, before we head over to Bloomberg, let's head over and check out the email I got in response to yesterday's show. It said, I saw your latest video tonight and the BLS JOLTS report has direct seasonally adjusted monthly employment data in the JOLTS mathematical formula. And what's important is this email is from a a former insider who actually worked on the payroll data and according to his opinion as is ours that the data is complete garbage check this out he says the only good employment data put out by the BLS are the QCW numbers and they come out quarterly so there's a time lag of six to seven months which does no one any good when financial life decisions have to be made and this is a key point that I made in yesterday's show that investors and consumers and businesses are making decisions based on highly inaccurate data. And we're about to find out that the data is even far worse than we know. And we're very close to that tipping point where we're about to see the U.S. economy plunge into a recession. He notes that 14 years ago, you had perfect monthly employment data that was 99.6% correct on the first release of the data when there were local people making the official not seasonally adjusted data that's gone. They don't do that anymore due to budget cuts. It's all been consolidated. And now we get highly inaccurate data. If you want to see this improve, that's why we need to tell our politicians to put money into the data series because what we see right now is the Fed is making one of the biggest mistakes in history based on some of the worst possible data that government puts out. And here we can see the data today just validates exactly the trend we're showing as U.S. companies add the fewest number of jobs since 2021, since the ADP data. We now see private payrolls rose 99,000 in August after 111,000 July gain. And that was, of course, revised lower, which was what we continue to see from the government data. They put out a number and it gets revised down. And then they put out another number and it's continuously revised down. And yet decisions are made based on that top line number what we can see now is a trend for the labor market that not long ago just remember months ago the fed themselves said we see this from the office of the white house they said the labor market is strong and robust and i'm going to give you some new data that came out today that shows it's anything but in fact i'm going to give you some very convincing information that shows you that we are right on the edge of recession we're seeing the same setup that has happened over and over again and we're back at it. As wage growth for workers who change jobs as well for those who stayed in their current position continue to advance at the slowest pace since 2021. And what ADP is saying is those who have jobs are definitely getting wage increases, but the amount of them is shrinking. And this is something we've talked about is a dangerous red flag for the economy, particularly because inflation isn't coming down fast enough. And while the BLS does try to report as accurate data as it can with the CPI, there's some things that really doesn't take into account, which is debt service costs. It doesn't take into account the rising insurance costs that everyone's been feeling and the rapid increases in energy prices, which impact consumer and business budgets all the time. And right now we're seeing that squeeze everybody to the point where discretionary spending is coming down. And that's what's being mirrored in the payroll reports. But we've noted that the decline in pay actually matters as we look 
look at average hourly earnings of production and non-supervisory employees, this in red against the unemployment rate. This is a U3, the one the Fed talks about all the time. And what you see, a very nice mirror relationship here as the U3 unemployment rate goes up. Well, workers don't get as big of pay raises. Yes, they still do get raises even during recessions, but employers don't feel the demand to give out raises simply because they know that business is dropping. And if they see an employee who wants huge raises, well, they can just go find someone on the unemployment line and easily replace them. And we see this relationship repeat in the dot-com bubble, the global financial crisis, and we're seeing it now as average hourly earnings continue to decline as we get the official government data tomorrow. And as you know, we will be covering it because this is critical to the economy as we continue to see evidence that hours worked are getting cut and pay raises are shrinking. It's a dangerous sign for the economy, particularly when inflation is still running high. And here we see that U.S. companies added the fewest number of jobs since 2021 in August as high paying jobs in the information technology industry, the manufacturing sector and professional business services declined as the back to school hiring kicked in. And ADP notes that the job market's downward drift brought us to slower than normal hiring after two years of outsized growth. The next indicator to watch is wage growth, which is stabilizing after a dramatic post pandemic slowdown. But this is not going to last. And yes, there will be periods where it stabilizes, but the odds that going to continue to trend lower is very high because we continue to see consumer budgets are squeezed. We're hearing from more and more companies that they need to actually lower prices. And this means, of course, workers are not going to be able to get the pay raises they need. They're going to be forced to cut their discretionary spending because they can't afford higher prices. And next thing you know, we're in a situation called stagflation. And if you know what leads recessions every time, well, you've got, that's the word. Another report from the Labor Department showed initial applications for unemployment benefits declined last week to the nearly the lowest level since early July. Continuing claims, this is the one we watch every week, retreated to a nearly three-month low. And hesitant to dismiss workers outright, companies are scaling back hiring as they contend with high costs and elevated interest rates. And the latest private payrolls data adds evidence of moderating labor demand that can help further tamp down price pressures. And this is absolutely correct because when you have fewer people working, you have fewer people consuming, demand goes down, inflation comes down. We've seen this relationship over and over again. But let's take a look at the details of the weekly claims data because initial claims remain historically low. And this is a great sign for the economy because it means that employers are still holding on to workers. The question remains as for how much longer. Well, I'm going to give you some convincing evidence is not going to last much longer at all. And we looked at continuing claims, which dropped 22,000. This is nice. We want to see this number come down if we're buying into that soft landing scenario. So far, that's not the case. This could be just seasonal due to the back to school session. But as I'm going to show you, it's going to get much worse because a separate report today is from Challenger Gray and Christmas showed hiring plans at U.S. companies this year through August fell 41 percent from the same eight month period in 2023 announced job cuts were down 3.7 percent. So one thing we can validate is even though the JOLT survey, as our former expert noted in his email, is extremely inaccurate and very useless, the Challenger Gray and Christmas survey is very good. But I want you to see how the media spun this story because they noted that announced job cuts were down 3.7%. But let's take a look at the real report here because from Challenger, they note that job cuts announced by U.S.-based companies surged in August 2024. That's the real headline. Hiring falls to the lowest year to date since Challenger began tracking in 2005. So if you want to talk about the scenario of a soft landing or no landing, that is not the headline you want to hear at all. And U.S.-based employers announced 75,891 cuts in August, a whopping 193% increase from what was announced one month prior. So what we're seeing is employers are trying to hold on to employees, but demand keeps going down. They're now giving them the announcement they're saying in the months to come, these employees are going to hit the unemployment line. Perhaps some of them will get severance packages and will not show up in the official data that what we're going to see is spending power continue to decrease. 
And for the year, companies have announced 536,421 job cuts. That is down 3.7% what was announced through August of last year, but still we're starting to see it increase as the U.S. economy rolls over. And you can see the announced job cuts have spiked over last month, now heading back higher to where we saw them in 2023. This is a dangerous sign as we see the U.S. economy roll over, and in particular, some high-wage jobs in the tech sector, as the technology sector announced the most job cuts in 20 months, when nearly 42,000 cuts were recorded for January of 2023. And the sector now has announced nearly 40,000 job cuts for August for a two-day total of over 105,000. Now that is down 29% from what was announced the same period last year. But in the same period last year, we weren't planning on a soft landing that the Fed said that they were going to nail what it looks like right now. The only thing they're going to nail is a darn nasty recession. And why are companies cutting? Well, check this out. It's not due to artificial intelligence, as many people might believe. So far, only a little over 7,000 jobs were cut due to AI. And last month, a little over 37,000 job cuts were attributed to cost cutting, while 16,439 were due to market economic conditions. So when you hear cost cutting, what you hear is companies are being squeezed at the margin. Prices are going up, sales are going down. And that means, of course, you've got to cut people because overall revenues are dropping market conditions indicate that companies outlook aren't optimistic again they need to cut people ahead of time this isn't the data we wanted to hear what it tells us we are squarely now pointing the economy into a recession and that's called stagflation my friends as we look at the consumer price index against advanced retail sales that's shown in red both on a year-over-year -year rate of change and what we're hearing is prices are still rising and yet we're seeing demand go down when that happens you get these gray shaded bars that indicate a recession that's happening right now as we look at retail sales continuing to decline and likely to go down further in the months to come and that means inflation still too high putting us in another stagflationary scenario that the Fed put us in and that we can't get out of without having a recession. And we get some further evidence that the JOLT survey was, well, at least accurate in terms of the direction as U.S. employers have announced nearly 80,000 hiring plans, down 41% from the 136,000 plans recorded through August last year. So some companies are hiring, but they're hiring a lot less, and the year-to-date total is the lowest since Challenger began tracking in 2005, that is dangerous. It says that the U.S. economy is not going to turn around and boom like the stock market is indicating. What it says is we're about to see the economy plunge into recession. But one trader doesn't buy it. Going into tomorrow's payroll report, well, he took a big bet that the government is going to get the data wrong on the survey for the non-farm payroll report, believing it's going to come in far hotter than expected because of the downward revenge visions that we've seen will it be true well he's betting a lot of money and here we can see unknown traders put on huge bet as jobs report will be so hot it'll send 10-year treasuries back above four percent and here's what zero hedge notes that now that the bls resumes its manipulation goal seeking to make the economy seem quote as strong as possible two months into election what we're looking for is a report that will be hot and then be revised lower later it's possible that's going to happen we'll find out first thing tomorrow morning we'll cover it in the show tomorrow but check this out someone bet millions in premium so that yields will soar in the next 48 hours on tenure will they get it right will they get it wrong well of course the market believes that things are going to get worse but one report could send them higher at least in the short term but one report that came out today it says the economy is indeed in a stagflationary period and only going to get worse that was the ism as it reported on the services sector activity showing it expanded at a modest pace that's being generated for the second month in a row considering that they say modest is a 51.5 remember 50 is the bar to beat because it tells you the economy has not changed from the prior month so what we're seeing here is indeed the services sector expanded but not a whole lot 
And after improving slightly in July, the group's order backlogs measure slumped nearly seven points, the most since April 2020, that when the pandemic stifled business activity. So that indicates that the services sector has a lot of employees that are going through those backlogs, getting rid of them. This is a warning sign because remember, when we see backlogs go away and we see new orders drop, well, that means you've got too many employees. The next move is to cut hours. And here we see, while the index is volatile, the contraction and backlogs over two of the last three months risk prompting companies, here you see it, to adjust headcounts and worker hours. And if you don't think services companies do it faster than the other parts of the economy, well, they do. And government figures out Wednesday showed job openings dropped to the lowest level since the start of 2021, while the number of layoffs picked up in July. The vacancies data, combined with a fifth month of contracting manufacturing activity, illustrates softer economic growth. What it does is it says the economy is pointing right into a recession. And the ISM survey precedes government data on Friday. There's forecast to show a moderately faster pace of payroll growth in August after one of the weakest gains since the pandemic. And even with the expected pickup, the three-month average gain would be the smallest since 2021. And if we start to look to the ADP data as a guide, well, what ADP always has been undershooting the non-farm payroll report, suggesting that we are going to see a number somewhere in the 100,000 range. Will it blow out expectations and hit 200,000? Well, we'll find out soon enough as the ISM Service Business Activity Index with parallels to group factory output gauge expanded at a slower pace while new orders expanded only slightly faster than a month earlier. So we're seeing, again, services sector having too many employees. It showed inventories grew in August after shrinking a month earlier and service providers continue to view their stockpiles as too high. What is that telling you? There isn't enough demand. When you don't have enough demand, you see price pressure come down. That's disinflation. And a gauge of prices paid by service providers edged up to 57.3 in August. That's a three month high. Let's take a look here. What we see again, new order growth still expanding, but the problem is employment is stagnating against the fact that backlogs are contracting. But notably, what do we see? We see prices going up. We see inventories going up. We see new export orders going down. What is that telling us? Exactly what we know is that consumers cannot afford higher prices. It tells us very clearly we're in stagnation. We can go back to that chart we looked at earlier. It's very clear. When you see rising prices against falling demand, you get a recession each and every time. And what we're finding out right now is the labor market is absolutely confirming that. But one thing we are bullish on and we think there's going to be strong demand for, and that's green energy metals and Hertz Energy is looking to be a leader in that space. Check them out on the CSE under symbol HZ and on the OTCQB under symbol HZLIF. I'm going to show you how to buy below the insiders who are looking to drive the stock price higher and put money in your pocket. And they are developing green energy metals to power the future. They've got their uranium project in Canada and three lithium projects throughout North and South America. And there is a rush for uranium as nuclear power remains one of the few sources of electricity that combines large-scale power output and low greenhouse gas emissions with costs comparable to those of traditional fossil fuel power. Globally, 60 reactors currently under construction represents a 17% increase in nuclear capacity with an additional 110 reactors planned. And Canada is rich in uranium resources and has a long history of exploring, mining, and generating nuclear power as Canada could take back the top producer title led by uranium miners, which represent over 15% of global production. And it's a well-timed opportunity in lithium as lithium demand is rapidly increasing in response to movement in green technologies and their reliance on battery metals. It's one of the key components in electric vehicle batteries, but global supplies are under strain because of rising demand. And according to the IEA, the world could face a lithium shortage by 2025, putting a big tailwind behind Hertz Energy stock. And global demand for lithium ion batteries is expected to soar over the next decade as lithium is the unrivaled charge carrier for electrification as stated by Volkswagen. And they have diversified exploration with properties all throughout North and South America. And here we can see they have their 100% owned uranium project in Canada, and they have 100% ownership in their lithium products. They've got a partnership with Penn State University to develop patent pending lithium extraction technology. And they've got an experienced leadership with a proven track record in the mining industry. Let's take a look at one of the recent updates as Hertz Energy provides corporate update and announces option grants. Again, you can find them on the CSE under symbol HZ 
and under the OTCQB, under symbol HCLIF, everything you need to know in the pinned comment and description below. As the company currently has approximately 800,000 in flow through capital available to deploy on critical mineral projects, and is a discussion to possibly acquire other critical mineral projects, including antimony, copper, or nickel prospects located in Quebec. While there's no guarantee additional project acquisitions will materialize and discussions are at their early stages, the company will continue to provide updates as discussions are in progress. They've also announced they've granted an aggregate 4 million stock options to consultants, officers, and directors of the company to purchase 4 million common shares in the capital of the company pursuant to the company's share option plan. The options which invest immediately are exercisable at an exercise price of 8.5 cents per share for a period of 12 months from the date of grant, giving the insiders all the motivation to drive this stock price higher, put money in your pocket. This is giving you the opportunity to get in below where their target price is at. Now let's turn to Stockhead who says blinkers off every ASX junior miner with a horse in the West antimony race. Let's take a look here because prices of critical mineral antimony are flying through the roof after China made a surprise announcement to restrict exports earlier this month and ASX stocks with exposure to the semi-metal have started to go gangbusters which is why Hertz Energy is looking to pick up projects with antimony because it could be a huge boost for their stock. And it's reason so hot right now is China is the largest producer of antimony on the planet and buy quite some margin and it's just restricted exports of the commodity adding to the pile of commodities it's already put the blinkers on which include germanium gallium and graphite cheap domestic labor and cheap high carbon emitting mining and refining practices out of china for these once obscure minerals have meant the rest of the world has been happily importing low-cost raw and refined materials from the middle kingdom for decades and china knows this as it wields export restraints of its commodities it's monopolized as a geopolitical weapon and usually found within certain types of gold deposits antimony is a semi-metallic chemical element which can exist in two forms the metallic form is bright silvery hard and brittle the non-metallic form as well one of the most explosive materials on the planet and we need more of it because it's increasingly used in high-tech applications such as lithium-ion batteries solar panels and wind turbines due to its flame retardant and anti-corrosion properties and by the end of 2020 prices were below about six thousand dollars per ton as prices have gone up incrementally yet the start of the year when a ton of the stuff would fetch say twelve thousand us dollars it's only taken eight months for that price to almost double to its current all-time highs of twenty four thousand five hundred tons at the time of writing and this could be a huge boost for hertz energy let's take a look at their stock price because if they do start picking up projects watch out it could take off and again we talk about how the insiders are highly motivated to drive the stock price up here's your opportunity to get in underneath that eight and a half cents per share level as of the time of filming of seeing just under five cents a share you want to be targeting buy points i'm going to show you between three to five cents a share you notice this is where buyers have been at previously which is indicated here by the volume profile line shown in red but where are your target exit points well if you are looking for a trade you want to be looking at the 50-day moving average which which is right at six cents a share with an upside potential of eight cents a share. And if they have some big news about picking up another project, particularly one with antimony, then watch out. The stock could take off even higher from there. But as always, with any company we feature on our show, you're under no obligation to purchase their stock. Be sure to do your own research before placing any trades. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.